This is one of the six luxury designer handbags that I resisted purchasing in 2023. We are bombarded with constant fashion hauls and unboxings and I thought it'd be interesting to make a video of those items that I was really drawn to but for a variety of reasons I decided to walk away. This is the Lady D Joy. This was actually 2022 summertime when it first launched. I went to go check it out with a friend and I was in Atlanta and they had the black one on display. Super versatile it's got this long base it's kind of like a baguette shape it's longer with a top handle so think of the lady dior but stretched out and shorter but it's got the classic dior charm the click clack handles the quilting of course it comes with a shorter chain strap as well as a longer leather strap so i loved the versatility of that this white one was so pretty it was summertime i was wearing white sandals so it just matched so well price is obviously up there you can look it up and you know it was it was a sort of a smitten kind of moment you know I immediately was drawn to it you guys know I've had a love-hate relationship with my small size ABC Lady Dior so I was thinking maybe should I let that go and get the Lady D Joy instead but I decided that for all the reasons why I don't use the Lady Dior as much I think the same thing would happen with the D Joy. So I decided to walk away. Even this micro was calling me at some point last year, but it doesn't fit my phone. That was a total deal breaker. So I walked away. Next, you guys might remember this video that I made last year. When I went to the LV boutique, I saw this new release. It's called the Tilsit bag. And I didn't expect to see this there. I didn't go looking for it. But when I spotted it, really caught my attention because of the unique features. So this is what it looks like on the inside, all micro suede. It's next to the pochette Matisse, which you guys know I love, in the reverse monogram. And you can see the shape, the silhouette, very different, playful. It's got that curved bottom. It's not symmetrical. It's got the black treated leather so you don't have to fuss over any kind of vaquetta and this is how it goes it's like a rocking horse it goes back and forth but it sits upright also comes with this strap which is very much like the strap that comes with the the noe bags the neo noe so if you know it's got multiple snaps you can pull it so that it's longer and then you can push it back in to make it shorter this is what the bag looks like on me crossbody it was actually quite comfortable however that tall black top handle it just sort of is there as you can see it kind of flops forward and it doesn't flop backwards because these straps will hold it back but you know I didn't love it crossbody here it is on one shoulder short really cute fits kind of like right under the arm and I'll give you a close-up so you can see how it works with the strap it's just this handle was like ugh. I don't want, I just don't want the handle there flopping around, but I do like the fact that you can wear it top handle and crook of the arm. So it was kind of like a, uh, I don't know if I really like it enough the way it looks. So here we go close up again on the strap because you know, you can see that it fits nicely under the arm when you shorten a strap like this. I think reverse monogram is interesting, but it might have too much going on for me. You know, you've got the two different color tones and then you've got also the black treated leather. So it might be a little too much for my liking. I tend to gravitate more towards the classic monogram, if you guys know. This is the front just like that, kind of like a lady bag, you know, held top handle like that. It looks very, doesn't look formal necessarily, but it could look a little dressy. Not that monogram is that dressy, but you get what I'm saying. The back has no pocket, so that's a minus. So, you know, I was hemming and hawing and I thought I wasn't planning to buy a bag. I'm not loving it, so I walked away. Here's another bag. You guys convinced me to go check it out. So I made this video. This was when the Speedy B20 released in the Dami Ebin. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the Speedies in the Dami Ebin, so I went and tried it on. This one here comes with the guitar strap. You guys know if you've watched my other videos, I don't like the guitar straps with Louis Vuitton written in big letters all across, but it is comfortable. Now, some of you said I can buy this bag and I can just sell the strap, but it's just such a, an annoying nuisance to have to do that. I was thinking, possibly, do I buy this Speedy B20 and then I let go of my Speedy B25 because they would both be in the Dami Abin and it's sort of repetitive and this is just so comfortable crossbody and you can be, you know, 
hands-free running around and it's not as big as the 25 size. However, I decided ultimately, no, I'm just gonna admire this little cutie. Look how cute it looks in the crook of the arm. It's a very practical size, fits a lot. But I'm just gonna admire it from afar because my Speedy B25, it works really well for me when I, de I need to carry a lot, especially on rainy days when I want to carry an umbrella. This little one is not going to fit nearly as much. And I thought I need to get out of the mindset of like constantly thinking, swapping out bags, upgrading bags, selling one to get another one. It's a bit tiresome, honestly, because there will always be something new. So as much as I thought this was adorable, and I know many of you wanted me to get it, I did not, in the back, sitting on the glass is the Nano. Just so you can see, the Nano in relation to the Speedy B20. The Nano is a, a, a total no for me because it doesn't fit my phone and that's a deal breaker as you guys know. But this is a really good size if you don't have other Speedies. But for me, this was a walk away moment. Next, this Chanel bag called me Last year, it was around summertime, it's the pink that called me, it's the cuteness that called me. So it's in lambskin. And it's kind of like the wallet on chain, but it's not. They call it the phone holder with top handle. Doesn't really have a fancy name. But you guys know I'm always drawn to pink bags, but I know they don't really work for me on a regular basis because I tend to gravitate towards neutrals. But it was so cute. And I tried it on in black, but it was too similar to my black classic walk. But it's adorable. It's got the little top handle and it's got the chain. One thing I didn't like is that the chain is not removable. So I felt like that made it a lot less versatile. There were a lot of different colors here. This one had the pink underneath. So it was two-toned. Price was, I mean, it's Chanel, but price was more than I expected. More than my walk prices, as you can see here. So... I decided this is gonna be another moment where I admire it from afar, super cute, but it would be somewhat repetitive, not necessary in my wardrobe. And yeah, so I decided I'm not gonna get it. I don't think I even showed this on my channel before. Then this one here, this is the Bottega Veneta mini Kabat bag, the mini size. Now, you have the classic woven intracchiato. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's beautiful, it's minimal, it's classic. However, this does not have a closure of any kind. None of the kabats do. I was hoping that on the mini they would put a little hidden magnet on the inside, but no. So if you drop the bag or it spills over, everything is gonna come tumbling out. It does also come with a thin leather strap, which is not shown here, but I liked it really, I thought it was cute, just kind of handheld, crook of the arm. This is the color, beautiful. I think the chocolate tone is their best color from Bottega, but look at the price, 5,200, so no. Then the Celine, if you guys have been following me on Instagram, I posted when I was at Celine. This is the bag that I resisted going to look at in person on purpose for over a year because I knew I would be drawn to it. This is the Tri Triumph bag, and I tried it on the, in the teen size, which was my preferred size. I felt like it was really, cute but also practical it fit my phone and i have the largest iphone pro max and here it is in the original larger size against my frame for reference i'm about five feet six inches tall good size but i really prefer the teen actually it would hold all my essentials here's a side by side but i decided to leave the bag and try out the triumph belt instead that's what i chose as my Christmas present. So I have that belt. I know I'm due to do a review. I will do it soon. I have the Celine Classic box bag already and it's so similar to the Triumph. And this too is a classic. So I felt like, what am I trying to do here? Again, the Triumph, beautiful, beautiful, but I will also admire this from afar. After all, I always say it's free to admire from afar and there's no need to own every pretty thing we see. We can walk around and enjoy all the goodies but we don't have to always take them home. Let me know what you think. Did I make any mistakes? Let me know if there's a bag that was calling you all throughout last year, but you resisted and tell me how that went. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.